This is what happens when I try and film with the door open. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Felicia and today we're gonna do something ever so slightly different. We're actually gonna use Lightroom on a filmmaking channel. Believe it or not, Lightroom is actually a really handy tool for filmmakers as well. If you need to edit up stills for a mood board or if you need to use it to work out grading styles and send them to your color grader early so they know what you're after, Lots of different uses you can have for Lightroom. But what we're gonna do today is we're actually going to take a bunch of stills from projects that I've done this year, and we're going to make them look a little bit nicer so that we can self-promote on Instagram. So all of the images are graded and ready to go, but they are 235 or 240 crop. Well, most of them. Some of them are also 16.9. Point is, they're not one by one. So when you upload something to Instagram that isn't one by one, Instagram is gonna display it correctly in the feed, but when it comes to your grid, it's actually gonna zoom that image in a little bit just so it fills up that grid one by one square. And sometimes that doesn't look so nice. So if you wanna upload an image and maintain its size in its feed, as well as maintain the whole image inside your grid, you're going to wanna put some bars on the image or a border on the image to make that whole image fit into the one by one grid. That was all a little bit confusing. How about I show you an example? Instead of doing this, you wanna do this. It just makes your grid look a little bit neater and Instagram isn't actually gonna zoom in on a particular section of that image. It's still gonna display the whole image in both situations, in your feed and on your grid. Now that I have thoroughly confused you, let's get into it. So before we get started here with this part of the tutorial, I did want to point out that I have kind of cobbled this together from other tutorials that I have seen in the past about how to do this for Instagram and how to use it for borders. Uh, some of those tutorials didn't quite cover what I'm doing here, especially because the operating system was completely different. So they were using Mac and I'm using PC. Uh, the process is fairly similar, but there are slight differences, especially because it is relying on the printer that you have have on your computer or you have connected to your computer because that will determine paper sizes and things like that. So there are some details that are a little bit convoluted from the tutorials that I've seen and I had to kind of cobble something together myself. Um, this is, as far as I can tell, the best method I've been able to work out to do this. But if you do have a method that is better than what I've got here or faster than what I've got here, feel free to leave it in the comments down below because I'd love to learn and I'm sure everybody else here would like to learn that too. Okay, so let's get started. Let's open up Lightroom Classic CC. You can use any type of Lightroom you've got, uh, but your process might be ever so slightly different. But if you follow this tutorial, you should be able to kind of work out and correlate what you've got on your screen and what I'm doing here. Okay, so I have pre-loaded these images, these film stills on here already, and I've pre-cropped them as well. They're mostly like 16.9, some of them are 235, some of them are 240. Uh, depending on the project. So obviously not being the one by one, we need to change that to make them fit into a one by one square. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you wanna click on the print module. This is where we'll be doing all of our work. So as you can see, the image has been put onto a page uh, that is 16 by nine. We don't want it to be 16 by nine, we want it to be one by one. So we're gonna have to change the page setup as well as some details in the right hand panel here in order to get it to the correct size and also get it to stretch right to the edges. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go into page setup. And if you have a look at your paper sizes, you're pretty restricted. Uh, and this is according to your printer, so you might see something completely different, but the page sizes I've got here are not one by one. So we're gonna to have to do a custom size. And to do that, we have to go into properties and we have to have a look at our sizes here. We have a larger selection here, but there's still no one by one. So we have to go to user defined, which is right down the bottom here. Now in here, we can make our own presets. So under user defined, I'm gonna change that and I'm gonna call this one Instagram 
and we're going to change the paper width and the paper height first and then we're going to enable borderless printing because if I click enable borderless printing now it's going to lock off the paper width at uh, 2100 which we don't want it to do so I'm actually going to change this to inches because I understand inches a bit better than I do centimeters which is strange coming from a country that uses centimeters and not inches Anyway, so let's have a look at paper width. We have some restrictions on the side here. So 850 is our restriction for paper width. So we're gonna change that to 850 because we're gonna want it to be as good as possible, I guess. And the paper height, obviously, because it's gonna be one by one, is gonna have to be the same thing. So 850 there too. Now we're going to enable borderless printing. And as you can see, that's locked that off. And we can save our preset. Great, that's come up in our list. Then we go, okay. So once you're done there, you'll notice down the bottom here, it says borderless printing. Make sure you select that one because you're going to want your image to fill up to the sides of the paper, the theoretical paper, the one by one piece that we have. But it is gonna come up with a pop-up here that says the print quality might be bad on the edges, but we're not actually printing the image. So you don't need to worry about that. And then we just go, okay. So if you click okay, and then go back to your print setup, You'll notice that in the sizes, it's not actually listed there. Our Instagram setup is not there. Now, this just means it just needs a refresh, that's all. So if you just click OK or close that and then you reopen it, it'll be there. There you go. Cool. So now we've selected Instagram. We made sure our sheet is borderless, blah, 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 blah. That's all done. We hit OK. And that has changed the size of our page. Cool. We still have a few more things to do in the side here, in this right hand side. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the cell size and the margins. So all of our margins are set to zero, which means that is completely borderless printing. And I can stretch this image right to the edge. So if you have a look at the cell size, we can change that cell size to as big as we possibly can. So yeah, you can make that cell size whatever you want. If you wanted to make that really small and make the image right in the center, which is probably not a good thing because people aren't really gonna see that very well on Instagram. But you know, you can, you can make this whatever size you want. You can even put multiple images in that one frame if you like, but we're going for one right in the center with the two white bars. So we're gonna make that as big as possible and the width as big as possible as well because some of our images are 16.9, they're not 235 or anything like that. So we're gonna make that space that that image restricts to as big as possible. Continuing on down here, we also have the page background color. Now you can change this to any color or shade you like. All you have to do is click on the white there and you'll get a little pop up here with all of your shades. And then if you bump up that saturation, you'll see all the colors. You can pick whatever you want. I'm gonna do white because I know it blends into Instagram really well, but I mean, you could also do black in this case, I guess too, because cinema images are designed to be seen in a dark room and having it against black will make your contrast, the colors, e everything uh, display as it should. Whereas putting it on a white background might make your image seem a little bit darker than what it actually is. But I'm okay with that for now, especially for this example. You could also put an identity plate on there if you wanted to. I mean, who would, because it's a film still, you don't really need to, there's no real point. But if you wanted to, that option is totally there. Now, important stuff here, when you get down to print job, you need to make sure it is selected to print to a JPEG file so you can save that file instead of sending it to a printer, obviously, because we're not sending it to a printer, we're just saving it for online. So next up, you've got the file resolution. Now, this is the part that is a little bit vague about which to choose. You can choose anything almost, it seems. From all of the research I've done, I've gathered that PPI doesn't really mean much to viewing something digitally online. Uh, it more is useful for printing, obviously, and scaling a print. Uh, so you can set it to whatever you want. Now, in saying that, uh, a lot of people have recommended doing 92 PPI. Uh, so I am going to set it at 92 just because that seems to be the consensus generally. But uh, know this, a lot of people also say it doesn't matter. But again, I don't know too much about that. I'm just going off what I've heard is a better option. So I'm gonna go with 92 PPI. You also don't need to worry about print sharpening because we're not printing the media anyway. So don't worry about that. Uh, and now we need to make sure that the JPEG quality is 100 because we wanna make that as best as possible. And here is the biggest 
part, you need to have a look at the custom file dimensions. So on Instagram, a one by one image should be 1080 by 1080 pixels. Now 1080 pixels in inches is 11.24 inches according to my calculations. If I'm wrong, please hit me up in the comments because I would like to know if I am incorrect there. But 11.24 inches by 11.24 inches will get us a one by one image that is of 1080 pixels by 1080 pixels. Now we're just gonna stretch that image out right to the edges. So we'll go back up to our cell size, which is the cell that the image is contained in. And we'll make that as big as we possibly can. There we go. Cool. So now that we've had a check of all our information, we know that the custom file dimensions are 1080p by 1080p. We've got the right resolution. We've got the right amount of information for the JPEG. So it's hundred percent information on JPEG quality. Everything's set. Now we just need to save that as a template. So in order to do that, just go over to the left hand side here and it says template browser. So if we click on template browser, we can change this user template to Instagram and we can pop it in the user templates folder and just hit create. Now that exists for us to go back to at any point. We don't need to go through all of this rigmarole again if we've changed page sizes in the meantime and we've come back to do an Instagram style uh, export, we can just click on that and it will automatically apply that to all of the images inside our collection. So once you've set up your own template in the user templates and that's all saved for a later date, uh, we can start to look at each image and just make sure that they are working in the confines of the settings that we've put in there. Uh, make sure they're displaying correctly and if they're all good, they're good to export. So in order to export, we're going to have to select them all. So first of all, select the first one and then scroll all the way to the end and select the last image while holding down shift and that will select all of them. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select print to file, which is on the right hand side, right down the bottom, just select print to file. It'll come up with a pop up where we can save them. So I'm going to save them to my desktop where I have a folder labeled Instagram film stills, and we might just make a new folder and say completed. Perfect. So that's where we're going to save them. Open that up and select that folder. And now it is preparing the print job. So it is exporting all of our pretty little pictures. Okay, now that that's done, we can have a look at our results. So let's open up that folder there. We'll go to our desktop, Instagram, film stills, and completed. And as you can see, even in that thumbnail, you could see that um, there is a white bar on the top and the bottom. And that will mean that the whole image will appear in our grid as I showed you earlier. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something from today's video. I wanted to make this video because I was actually struggling with how to do this within Lightroom. I can do it in Illustrator, I can do it in Photoshop, but Lightroom, I wasn't too sure. And when I did Google it to try and find tutorials to work it out myself, I found it a little bit difficult to find all of the information that I needed and it wasn't as straightforward as I thought. However, when I did follow along these, with these tutorials and had a look at what I was doing differently or how my setup was different because a lot of them were on Mac, I was able to kind of work out my method of doing it. So I thought I'd share it with you. If you have any different methods or ways that you think might be better, I'd love to hear them because I mean, I'm not an expert in the matter, but I thought I'd share a, an easy method that I had worked out. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to give this video a big fat thumbs up. And if you would like to see more of my face and learn a little bit more about filmmaking in the process, remember to subscribe and I'll see you next Sunday.